Hey guys, a little bit of a different start to this episode. Wanted to try something new, give you guys a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be doing today. And what we're going to be doing today is concentrating on what you see behind me, and that is building this keep, the very important part of this castle. Um, also, these things that I'm standing on right here are what is called crenellations, and I'll talk a little bit about that. And for the first 10 minutes of this episode, I do talk a little bit about my life and what's been going on, the craziness of it, and why it's keep, why it's kept me away from YouTube for so long. So um, if you guys don't want to watch it, and I don't take any offense, if you want to skip ahead to the actual building of the keep, uh, there'll be a little link on the screen somewhere for you to click. For those of you that are on a mobile device or some sort of device that can't click on annotations, uh, fast forward to about 10 minutes into this video. I think I'll have something that flashes up on screen that tells you exactly where you can scroll to on the little bar or wherever it is that uh, you go to uh, scroll through a video. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy and let's get the show started. What's up people? Perry here with episode number 26 of Surviving Creatively. And it's been a while. It's been a while since I last recorded and put out a video for you guys. But we'll get into that in just a little bit. But what I wanted to do is to kind of go over what we're going to do in this episode. And that is we're going to start off by building our castle. And getting started with the whole planning of it, you can see that the orange wool right here I have kind of set up to kind of give me a guide as we start building this area. And this right here, this central location, is going to be the home of our vault where we're going to be keeping the things that we want to keep safe. Obviously, the best place to put um your valuables and all that stuff is usually in a centralized location where you can kind of, um, I guess, protect it that much easier. And I'm thinking there's a there's like a giant hole here, and you know, surrounded by rock, so that would be a pretty good place to put a vault, wouldn't you say? So, um, so all I'm doing right now is trying to uh, plan out the area that I want the the keep to be and it's very important when you're going through the whole planning process is that we are able to just figure out exactly where we need everything to go and so that's what i'm going to be doing with this orange wool all i'm going to be doing is just making a small box well not small <laughs> it's going to be a pretty big pretty good size keep but um, I just want to get some basic dimensions going and from there we can kind of expand on it and try and figure out uh, what exactly we want to do. Now, why have I been away? Well, let me tell you something. A life, life's been crazy. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Lots of things going on in my life. Um, some of them I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, if you're wondering anything about the baby, um, the baby's just fine doing just great in fact in our last checkup uh, our doctor said that uh, everything size wise uh, she's doing just great um, so that that's something that uh, I'm looking forward to doing um, getting this baby out and all that other stuff it's it's kind of weird when you see your wife's stomach and it's getting bigger and bigger every day um, to know that there's another life in there and you're going to be responsible for it that's something that uh it kind of weighs on your mind a little bit so um getting ready for the baby is something that i've been working on um lots of just learning and of course buying stuff there's lots of stuff to buy especially that it's our first child um, we've been very lucky that uh, we have friends and family that are able to chip in um, financially and also with uh, other tips and tricks and all that good stuff. Uh, we do, we have uh, one particular family friend that uh, they they have four children of their own, so they have lots of tips to give me on how to raise a child. So uh, I've been listening very, very hard um, as to what they have to say. But um, actually, one of my f favorite things that my wife likes to do is that uh, when she's just sitting on the couch, you know, just 
vegging, vegging out, just watching some TV. Um, she likes to put the remote on her stomach. And as she's just sitting there, you can just see the remote kind of move or twitch every now and then. That's uh, that's our little baby just uh, just tossing around there saying, hey, hey, don't forget about me, you know. <laughs> um, so that's really, really awesome to see. Um, we always, I'm always trying to feel my wife's belly and it's really something interesting to try and see whether or not the baby moves and she, she tends to, um, tends to stiffen up whenever I put my hand on my wife's belly. My wife would tell me, oh, the baby's kicking, come, come take a look at it and, or, or come feel. And I, I try to, you know, put my hand on her belly and then just nothing, nothing. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling my uh, my child will be a stubborn one, but uh, <laughs> anyways. So preparing for the baby, that's uh, one thing that's going on in my life that kind of takes away from the whole putting out videos and playing Minecraft stuff. Um, also with work, work is a little bit of an. And let's just put it as a a little bit of an issue as of right now. Um, lots of things that are going on there that I need to pay close attention to that uh, I need to take care of. And um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that because, uh, well, you guys really don't need to hear about it. But um, the other thing that we are going to be doing, which is probably the thing that's taken up the most amount of my time, is that my wife and I and our baby will be moving to a new place by the end of this month. So that's something that is, you know, trying to coordinate movers and doing all this packing, trying to figure out what needs to be packed right now versus what needs to be packed later. All those sort of things are going to be uh, mounting as the time gets closer. Like I said, it's going to be at, at the end of the month, I'm going to be moving to a larger place, uh, which would be good because we need the space. And as it stands right now, we live in, in a one bedroom apartment. And at first we thought we could we could kind of work around it, you know. Um, but um, as it turns out, with me being at home, uh, working from home, and trying to fit in a baby crib or, you know, all the things that the baby needs, it kind of takes up a lot of room. And we just found that out when we were uh, bringing home a, a new stroller. And the, the box was huge and the stroller was huge. And we we're like, where are we going to put the stroller? So... Um, we decided, you know what, we need to move to a bigger place. So we're going to be moving to a nice little two-bedroom apartment. It's it's definitely got a lot of storage, which we need. And so, you know, again, that's stuff that's going to be taking up a lot of my time going forward. So I do apologize to you guys that, you know, the videos haven't been that regular. I am trying to really try to work out some sort of schedule where I'm able to upload on a regular basis because I really do love doing this and I don't I didn't think I would actually love doing this as much as I thought I would because you know I thought you know this would be a nice little hobby to do on the side put out videos every now and again but um, doing this playing Minecraft and talking to you guys is something that uh, is kind of therapeutic for myself just trying to talk about like design and trying to inspire you guys is obviously one of the main goals of doing this channel but um the other thing is it kind of takes my mind off of all the little stresses in life uh, you know with uh, the impending baby not that it's not a happy time for us it's um you know just trying to get all those things out of the way but when i play minecraft it's just me and you guys and we can just sit around and we can just you know do uh, play minecraft right so you know i i didn't think i would love it this much but i do really love it and i i will promise you guys this one thing that this channel will keep on going as long as i have a voice and i will talk this channel will keep on going on there may be breaks here and there and hopefully we'll be able to well i'll be able to upload on a, a little bit more of a regular basis but I really do appreciate you guys' support and all the little comments that you give me. I know that in the last video, um, I didn't, I haven't gotten around to respond to the comments just yet. But hopefully by the time this video goes out, I'll, I, I will have uh, responded to you guys. And, you know, I, you know what? Anything on your mind you want to put in the comments, you go right ahead. You do that. Uh, I will, of course, take a look at it. And if I come up with something 
thoughtful to say. Of course, I will reply to your comments. But um, but yeah, so this is basically what I have going on here is what I think will be a good idea for a size of the keep. And looking at it right now, it looks a little daunting. Um, just the actual size of it. I didn't think it would be this big. Let's put it that way. I didn't think it would be this big. And um, but but you know what? We'll go with it. We'll see where this design takes us. If we need to alter it here and there, we will. But um, like I said, right now the vault is going to go in here. That's going to be the main like centerpiece. What we need to kind of focus on and then the exterior is something that uh, we need to work on first of all as well but um, what I want to do is I'm going to go away for a bit and I'm going to start putting up um, kind of like the outline of the design of the keep that we want here so I'm going to go ahead and do that when I come back we'll, we'll take a look at that all right so I've been hard at work here trying to come up with a basic design I've come up with sort of like a three tier type design. You can kind of see it right now. There's this top layer, a middle layer, and this bottom layer right here. And what I'm thinking is that this bottom layer, layer or area will be sort of like an area for soldiers or where we're going to be uh, keeping the vault. Of course, you want to keep that down low, nice and safe. And then, so that's why it's kind of in this wide out pattern. So a nice stable base, right, for the castle to kind of sit on. And then this part right here will be kind of like a main, main area for, you know, quarters, uh, places for people to live and kitchens and all that stuff. There's a lot of space here, so there'll be a lots of room to put in whatever we need. And then this top layer will be sort of like a command and control center and the idea behind it is that this being the top area it's an easy way for people to communicate to the rest of the castle uh, the castle kind of extends out to here and then also the satellite castles which would be off into the distance in those directions obviously there's a, f a bit of a fog right now <laughs> well you, there's always been a fog but you can't um, you can't really see it right now you can kind of see it if I there you go. That's going to be where the other castle is going to be. And there's going to be one down there. But that we will get to uh, hopefully in the near future. But um, we're going to concentrate on this keep right now. And what was I wanted to talk about? I wanted to talk about the fact that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to figure out one specific detail. And it's going to be kind of like a repeatable pattern that's going to be echoed throughout uh, these castles or these sets of castles and I was kind of inspired by what is called crenellations. Now I think there are different words for it but basically it's this. I will just show you. I'll try to mock up something for you just real quick. So often in castles you kind of see this design right? The, these are what is called crenellations or um, I think there are other words for it, but no, I'm not too sure. This is the one that I kind of Googled and I came up with. But um, as you can see, these are a very cool, um, I guess, design feature. And the reason why they have this is that, take for instance, you're, you're an archer trying to defend the castle. And, you know, you shoot your bow off and you, you know, you're attacking whoever's down there trying to attack your castle. Um, oh, you need some place to reload, right? So that's what these little areas are for, so that they can hide out. The archers can go and hide out behind these things while they're being attacked. And they can reload in safety and, and do whatever they need to do. And then once they reload their bow again, they come out and they, they fire again. So that's the kind of the the reason why they have these sort of design patterns in castles there is a usefulness behind them and the idea that i want to go for is i want to take this idea and i want to expand upon it and i want to be able to kind of use my creative juices to create something that is visually appealing so um, what i think 
we're going to end up doing is we're going to exaggerate these crenellations a little bit and we're going to try and go ahead and get started on some sort of a pattern now like i said i was talking about the archers the archers being um using these to uh to kind of shield themselves from the attackers so i thought that maybe we can go with some sort of a bow type design and if i can just get that going right there so something like that so crenellation um, basically obviously this is mm, way in excess of what you actually need um, to shield yourself but we're using our creative juices here to kind of come up with a design and the idea behind it is that i want it nice and tall here and then as we move inwards it kind of gets smaller and smaller and i think it, it'll give us a nice little decorative element i guess you could say but um so it's going to be kind of like this and let me see if i can get some sort of working pattern for you guys going so you can kind of see what i'm talking about so something like that and it's it's something that um it kind of reminded me of I, i've been watching well i've watched architectural documentaries and all that stuff and one of the things that uh, you often run into trouble with when uh, architects are designing things is that obviously they have to be able to stand on their own right so you work in conjunction with uh, engineers to kind of get a good structural design going and often the the architects and the engineers tend to butt heads when it comes to trying to make sure that they you know the engineers want to make sure that the the structure stays up and the architects want to make sure that it looks good and oftentimes that can cause some headaches here and there but uh, i've often found that the good architects can make it work for the engineers and of course vice versa so um, you can kind of see what i'm going for here it kind of uh, starts out big here and then gets smaller as we go into the middle i'm going to go away for a bit and uh, what i'll do is I'll, I'll kind of expand on this design and when we come back i can better show you exactly what i'm talking about all right so what we have here is basically an expanded example of what I'm trying to do and that is trying to give some sort of flow to the design. Uh, like I was talking about before, these crenellations are sort of in a bow shape type pattern. And again, they're in kind of in excess of what uh, their, their usefulness is supposed to be, but uh, for our purposes, for design purposes, I think that we will come up with uh, an interesting pattern, I think. And uh, you can see right here, it's large in the, larger on this end, kind of bookends one end of the castle. And then as we get to the middle, it kind of shortens or squishes together. And then um, when I start expanding on this design, it'll again kind of fan out and get bigger at the end. Kind of uh, bookending like I was saying before, all this stuff here. So that's kind of the design that I'm going for. I like how it's turned out so far. And the way that I kind of do this is that there's no real rhyme or reason or uh, pattern to it. Usually I, I try to come up with some sort of interesting way of constructing it. But in this case, it was pretty much done, you know, there's kind of like a bs meter that goes off in my head you know when i'm trying to design these things i have an idea in my head but then in order to kind of make it come to fruition you kind of have to play around with the blocks a little bit and try and figure out where everything goes so for instance in this area right here i know that i want some sort of uh, uh this curved type pattern here so as i'm going through designing these things you can you know the little bs meter in your head kind of goes off when you're when you're looking at it and you're planning out where all the blocks go you can kind of see that oh look right here uh that's probably not the best so i think maybe we'll have to shave that down a little bit so you you play around with it a little bit and then you can come up with a design that kind of fits your eye and you all have that in your head it, it's a kind of a a thing that you know that something's wrong but at the same time how do you go about fixing it so that's kind of one of the things that you need to take into account when you're building your 
design. I know that some of you have that cool looking design in your head and the best thing I can offer to you is that it's all about practice. Practice makes perfect, right? So the more often that you start playing around with your designs, trying to visualize or make real what's going on in your head, uh, the easier it'll be in the future for you guys to kind of figure out what it is you want to do. So um, that's the design going forward. And all I need to do right now is to kind of expand on it. So I'm going to wrap this all the way around the castle and I'm going to do it for the this tier up here and then the bottom tier I've I've made another set and uh, it's a much larger set of a uh, design if I can get to it right down here there we go so you can kind of see that it's it's basically the same thing and again we're going to repeat this pattern as we go out through the castle so it'll be kind of like a re reoccurring theme so um, I'm going to go ahead and expand on this with the magic of MC Edit, of course, uh, save me, saves me a bunch of time. So uh, I'm going to go away. When we come back, we'll take a look at kind of like the, the final roughed-in design. All right, and here is a look at kind of the final roughed-in design of what we're going to be doing with this castle. Of course, the keep itself looks pretty good of course the rest of the castle we'll have to get to in another episode but uh, i just wanted to give you guys a look at sort of like the final design um of course lots of places to add in detail this wall right here looks a little boring right now but when we start to play around with the design a bit and try to fill in details here and there i think we'll come up with something really cool there um at the top what i'm thinking about is that most skyscrapers and this is this castle is kind of in a skyscraper type form because it's really tall. Most skyscrapers have what is called a crown on top of every building. And you can see if you look at any skyscraper, usually there's some sort of uh, defining feature at the top of it. Um, just to kind of add in that some sort of detail to the top. And what I'm thinking for right here is to kind of accentuate these crenellations a little bit. Using a lot of big words today, it seems like. <laughs> I have no clue why. But um, I'm thinking that we'll try and kind of figure out uh, a little bit of a detail that will work well with what we want to do here. And again, that little BS meter in my head goes off trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out a nice little curve that goes with this and you can see right now I'm not really matched up to what I want to do so we'll go ahead and we'll start adding in more blocks uh, something like that and then we'll just we'll just tidy up this end right here just so we can get a good look at it there we go yeah so something like that Again, the crown at the top of any skyscraper uh, should look different from the rest of the building. Again, it kind of bookends the top of the building. And you hear me talk about this a lot, bookending or storybook building, which is one of the videos that I've done. Uh, I think it was a, like a one clip tip. But um, what's really important about these is that it gives your eye something to focus on. And then from there, you can look at the rest of the details of the build. So. Uh, I think we'll have to play around with that a little bit more, but it's something that we'll have to reserve for the next episode. So I thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button if you, if you so choose. Don't forget to leave your comments down below, positive or negative. I don't care. Uh, it's always it, it's always cool to see you guys uh, in the comments, and I know that I haven't gotten to the comments lately to kind of answer some of your questions, and I'm. I'll be sure to do that in this one for sure. Um, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So that's it for me. Always remember, keep your head up and I'll see you in the next one.